taste good? Yes, thanks. I'm so glad you came back downstairs. I just couldn't face Scotty. That has got to be Rick. Hello? Yes, Rick. Yes, she's here. <laughs> just a few minutes after you left. No, no, Mr. Higgins is going to forget the whole thing. Where are you? Ah. Yes, I will tell her that. Um, I guess they're in the book room where she left them. Okay, I'll see you later. Tell Laura what? Uh, that he is just so happy that you're home and safe. Do you know he drove all over town earlier tonight looking for you, and then he went out again just before you got back? I'm sorry. No, not to be sorry. What's important is that you're here. Was he at the hospital? Yeah, he had gone back there on the chance that you might go back. So he's going to stop and see a patient in IC, and then he's going to get your purse and coat and come straight home. And that's the part I dread most. Why? Oh, because he's going to be so angry with me. He wasn't angry that, that you disappeared. He was just worried terribly, that's all. No, no, not about that. About my getting so serious with Scotty, he kept telling the both of us not to let our feelings get out of control over and over again. Laura, I think he's going to be a lot more understanding than you think he is. He's been as concerned as I have about seeing you so terribly unhappy lately. He only wants to help. Nobody can help me. Turn around a minute. This is good that, that we're having this chance to talk. Do you know what the worst thing is that can happen between two people who really care about each other? What? When the lines of communication between them break down, that's when all the terrible misunderstandings start. You mean like this morning? I'm sorry that I said all those things to you about Monica. Oh, we don't even have to talk about that now. I know that you were hurt and confused and you needed to lash out at someone and I just happened to be there. I know that you and Rick are having problems these days. I'd rather talk about your problems right now. That sounds like the beginning of a lecture. You're going to tell me that I'm too young to be engaged and that it shouldn't be this serious about anybody, especially so soon after David. I admit, um, it's very hard for me to accept the fact that you are old enough to care enough about someone to want to marry them. But I also know that you are a person of very deep and strong feelings. So I do understand, in a way, how it could happen. I think, though, that you are wrong to blame Scotty for betraying you. He's in a terrible position right now. I feel so sorry for him. I don't. He slept with Bobby right after he told her that he was in love with me. Now, how could he do that if he really loved me? I asked him exactly the same question when he told us the story tonight. But when he explained how she had pleaded with him to let her stay just one last time, honey, these things happen. Physical drives that have absolutely nothing to do with love, just with being close to someone. No, I can't accept that. I, I never would have done that to him. Come here and sit down for a minute. I do understand how you're feeling right now. I was your age when I became pregnant. And I was terribly in love. And I know all those feelings of inner turmoil and confusion that you're going through. But I want you to answer one question for me, very honestly, if you will. What's that? Can you honestly say, even with everything that's happened, that you don't love Scotty anymore? Mother. 
I, I, I'm trying so hard to tell myself that I don't, but I, I do. That's what hurts me so much. I love him more than ever, and marrying Scotty and spending the rest of my life with him has been the most beautiful dream I've ever had. Baby, baby. And now I have to stand by and watch him get married to Bobby Spencer, who did all of this just to hurt me. Mother, I can't. I just can't. I, I love him, and I can't stop. No matter how hard I try. Then that's your answer. How can it be? It's, it's hopeless. It's never hopeless if you really love someone. But Bobby's won. Maybe not if you fight back. How? I don't know yet. But I do know that if a relationship is important to you, it's worth fighting for. That's what I'm doing right now with my marriage. This is the first time I, I've ever felt so close to you. You're like my friend. That's nice. I mean, you're, you're here for me. You're not saying I told you so, or you're not calling me a silly, over-emotional child. You're not a child anymore. And I promise you, I will help you fight for what you want. Somehow, I will find a way to get you and Scotty through this. give up hope. That's what Scotty keeps telling me. But how can I help it? Scotty is going to marry Bobby, and that's going to be the end of everything I've ever dreamed of. No, you can't just give up. Now, I'm going to talk to Scotty, but, and I'll, I'll get more details. You've got to help me. Well, what can I do? Don't, don't keep on feeling that it's hopeless. You've, you've got to try to believe that your dreams might just come true after all. Bobby, I know that it's a change in plans, but I think it's a good idea. Listen, listen, will you just get permission from Mrs. Hardy to get a couple of days off so we can drive up to Canada and get married right away? If I could invite a couple of friends of mine over from AA for dinner tomorrow night, Oh, sorry, man. <laughs> I didn't know you were studying. Well, that's all right, Brian. I uh, can't concentrate anyway. But no, listen, you have over who you want, all right? Hey, you want to join us? Uh, thank you, Brian, but, uh, well, I'm going to be up in Canada, and I don't know when I'll be back. Canada? Yeah. How can you take off from law school in your last semester? Look, Brian, uh, there's something I got to tell you, and it's pretty heavy. Go ahead, Scotty. The reason why Bobby and I are going to Canada is to get married. So that we don't have to go through the waiting period to rest the red tape around oh, here. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Back up. Start again. You're going to marry Bobby Spencer. Brian, I don't have any choice now. She's pregnant and I'm the father. Oh. That is heavy. Yeah. But it's just to give the baby a name and then after the baby's born, Bobby and I are going to get divorced. Hey, Scotty, in case you haven't heard, this is 1979. I mean, we live in a state where abortion is legal. I mean, wouldn't that be the best thing for the both of you? No, Brian, uh, Bobby's against that whole thing. When she told me she was pregnant, she almost got hysterical because she thought that I was going to suggest that. Yeah. Hey, well, how's your dad taking all this? Well, he's pretty unhappy about this mess I've gotten myself into. But he has offered expenses until the baby is born, and then afterwards to see Bobby through the divorce. 
Well, I hope you're going to take him up on this, Scotty. No, no way, Brian. I'd rather give up law school. I'll keep my job at the hospital, but I'll get a night job instead. I mean, I've got myself in this mess, and I'm going to get myself out of it on my own. Scotty, if you quit law school, you're going to break your father's heart. And I don't have to tell you where he's going to run to to drown his sorrows, now, do I? Brian, I told Lee that I won't take any money from him, and it goes against everything that I stand for. Now, you listen to me. No, Brian, there's no, no other way out of this. Listen! If you want to marry Bobby because of your principles, that is your problem. But I understand your father's situation better than you do. And I'm telling you, if you shut him out and reject the only help he's got to give you, you're going to send him right back to the bar. Hello. Uh, Scotty, it's Leslie Weber. Oh, hello, Dr. Weber. Um, is Laura all right? I, I don't, I haven't uh, talked to her uh, yet. Uh, this morning we were up so late last night talking, she's still asleep. Dr. Weber, I hope I didn't cause any problems between you and Rick when I told you that whole story. I could tell that he was pretty upset when he heard about our engagement plans. Oh, Scotty, I can't even begin to think about any of that right now. I'm worried about the effect this is having on Laura. I'm afraid she isn't going to be able to cope with another disillusionment so soon after David. I, I don't know what to do anymore. I've tried talking to Laura so many times and she just won't listen to me. Scotty, now that I know the full story, I've got an idea I'd like to discuss with you. Sure, sure. I'll be at the hospital right after uh, I finish my classes. Fine. I have a few other things to do first, but I'll get in touch with you in Gail's office as soon as I'm free. Yeah, I hope so too. I'll see you later.